Well, good evening. Good evening. Welcome back into the porch. I'm Red Dirt Preacher, also known as Laney, around the house. So, let's just dig right into the new message that I got. It's old message, but I bring it in a new, in a new way. And uh, the message is when love don't, when, when love doesn't show up. When love doesn't show up. Okay. Now, a lot of us, and I know a lot of you on the porch personally, so I know that a lot of us are going through some seasons that are debriding you that are literally like slow killing you. Um, a lot of us are experiencing changes in our lives here out on the porch. So definitely say prayers to all of our brothers and sisters here. Um, but what I'm talking about is your killing fields, your killing season, the day that you lose your car, lose your hair, lose your child, lose a house, you lose something big. Now I'm not gonna spend about a lot of time on that. We've all been there. It's the killing fields, you die. You get ripped apart, things that you've known about yourself. It all just, it gets rearranged, okay? Your house falls down. And that that temple is you. It gets crumbled, just like the temple in the, in the Bible, you know? So we all have to go through this kind of death, ego death, spiritual death, emotional death. Usually an ego death, um, we go through these deaths while we're still alive. It almost makes it torturous. And I know that at these killing 11th hours where your life is falling apart, Something tragic could happen to you or a loved one and you're screaming at God, you're on your knees, you're praying him to uh, take it back or, or heal it or get rid of the diagnosis or, or, you know, we're praying for the bottom not to fall out. We're praying for us not to, quote, die itself, <laughs> to hurt. And when we go through this, and I went through it in my life, I definitely died, Okay. <laughs> spiritually, emotionally, mentally, there was a season there where I literally got killed. And I was still alive, walking around, and it was like, this was this horrific torture of it. And when I was going through that, I definitely was on my knees praying to God why he was allowing such atrocities to happen to me, to my character, to my life, to my truth, to my reality, and to my heart. And God was standing there watching. You know that I didn't deserve. I, I, I have a pure heart. And I have good intentions. I'm a, I'm a play kitten. I didn't deserve to be kicked around and mauled around by, by the lions that I was surrounded by. And when I was going through that, the Lord, it's like he was just standing there in front of me with his arms crossed while I was on some kind of cross and, and, and being crucified myself right there in my own life. And I was praying to Jesus, you're right there. Come be my savior. Why aren't you saving me? Jesus's refrain at the time, you couldn't tell me any different. It looked like betrayal. He wasn't budging. This man is my savior. I'm dying. It hurts. My life is falling apart. My, my mother, my father, my brother, my cousin, my lover. Come on. All right. When you take all these bullets, you're dying. And, and it's like Jesus didn't do anything. He didn't lift a finger to stop it. And in fact, it was like he opened all the doors and windows to help it happen to me. And I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't grab that for a couple of years. And, you know, Jesus talked to me last night. Now I, I've come to revelation with it and I've come to peace with it, especially with the Lord and within myself. It's the healing we do. But I want to bring the message to you that when you're going through these things in life that seem like they are the very things that is making you die. Um, Jesus isn't running to you because he's not going to be the one that takes you down from there. He's going to be the one that gets you up from there. We are all meant to do the dying, just like Jesus did on the cross. And we're all going to get up from there, just like he did on the cross. You're going to walk the pages of the Bible if you didn't read the pages of the Bible, darling. Not everybody has to read the Bible because we're all going to walk the pages of thee. And, you know, it's the secret of life, darling. You can pick and choose any, any old life path you want, but all of our life paths at the core of it mirror back what everything that Christ felt so you can build empathy for the for the Christ for, for Christ for the man for your God you know so you, you can understand and be denying so I just wanted to remind you that even Jesus told me baby when you were being ripped apart by jackals you know I, and I didn't do anything I didn't come to your aid I didn't come to your defense I didn't make it right I didn't read you know it seems like Jesus didn't move he allowed me to die, and I just couldn't get it. And Jesus said, I have great love. I have great love enough that I refrained. And that really hit me, because Jesus said, I was once in your shoes. Okay, I too was on a cross that wasn't for me. I was too, had a pure heart. I was righteous, it wasn't fair. I know how you feel, daughter. I too was on a cross. 
I too was getting ripped apart by jackals, by people that had betrayed me. I was being embarrassed. My my character was being defamed. All the same things that you felt in your own life when you were screaming out at me to to come help you. I loved you so much I refrained like that on my father. Jesus said, I remember back when I was on that cross. I remember back when I was bleeding for the father. I remember back when I was dying saying, you know, please don't forsake me. You know, get me down from here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Take this yoke from me. This is going to kill me. You know. So uh, Jesus followed it through. And even at the hour of the great refrain of his own father, get down from there. If the God's your dad, get down. What the... Uh, the beauty is it that God loved so greatly that he refrained from showing up to save his son. Because Jesus went from Jesus the Jew to Christ the Redeemer. That's a big flip of the coin. His death needed to happen so Jesus could come up a new man and be something for all of us. I mean, that's amazing, right? When you die in your life, not for real, but in all the other ways besides physically, because it's going to happen. Don't avoid it. The longer you avoid that, the more you stay in your own hell and not free. Allow yourself to do the dying. Allow it to hurt. And if you don't allow it, it's okay. There's prescribed chemical alchemy remedies that are going to come in your life, and they're going to hurt. And you're going to label that stuff the bad shit. And you're going to be questioning Jesus all damn day long about how he's letting all this bad shit happen to you. Well, it's really easy, son. It's really easy, daughter. Tell, you know, Lainey, I'll tell you what... What happened to me? There was a time where all kinds of bad shit happened to me in a span of a very small time. And it killed me. And you know what? I got up from there. I got up a new woman. I got up with a new life. I got up with a new vision. I got up with new hope. You know? So God has, has definitely changed me and given me now a life of perfection, a life of abundance, a life that's connected to him, spiritual gifts. I mean, you name it, I'm having a blast. But it took the killing of. It had to hurt so bad that I had to die. And so what Jesus was explaining to me that Jesus didn't have to forgive his father for leaving him there. He understood it was a great work done in him. It was a great work done in him by a great love. Because you and I, if we were there on, on, on crucifixion day, not knowing what we know now, we would have tried to stop it because we love Christ. A lot of us would. We would have been stopping something that was there for great love. It had a great, a great work for great love. And um, we didn't love Jesus enough to allow it. We would have loved him enough to stop it. Think about that. So Jesus is a lot like his own father when he's dealing with us. When we're down here in our killing hour, killing field, something's coming along, bad shit's happening to us so bad. It's killing us. He's not going to come in at that moment and be your savior because great loving you in a refrain is saving you. And that's the corner of the knowledge. Great love in the refrain. So it's all right if Jesus did look like he ignoring you. He ain't betraying you, Susan, Tommy, Kimmy, Tommy, you know, all y'all. You know, Jesus is not betraying you by standing there. Don't spend years throwing rocks at the man's foot because you can't understand why he allowed the same thing to happen to you that his father allowed to happen in him. He needed to stand up on top of that pile of bad shit and become something great, honey, because we all come from piles of shit. All right? And when you come up, you tell him who, who got you up from there. And that's Jesus. He's not going to take you. He's not going to get you down from there. He's going to get you up from there. Jesus is not the great Superman. He doesn't fly around being the great stopper of bad shit. That's not Jesus' job. <laughs> As we've seen in the last few videos I put up yesterday, Jesus is a savior. He's a great love and a great savior. He saves when bad shit happens. That's up to us. We create. Just like him, he doesn't control. He creates. Okay? And We'll get on with that story, but right now I wanted you to catch that great love stands still, and sometimes it looks like it ignores the hell out of you, and you'll take it as betrayal, and it's not. It's great love in absence, because 
in that, in and of itself, is loving you. Catch that. Put that in your feather and walk around. Put that put that feather in your head and walk around. Anyway, um, anyway I'm going to come back and probably do tell, do tell a little bit more. And tonight I, I captured uh, what usually crawls across my yard, this little badger called religion. And um, I don't mean to always capture it and kind of cluck it in the head, but religion likes to drive by me and, and punch me in the head and hit me with, you know, daggers. And religion's kind of mean, if you haven't noticed. It's very judgmental. And religion doesn't like me at all. <laughs> Find that weird? Right? Weird. So um, I have eyes for what religion is. So I think the next horse that we're going to ride is uh, uh, a religious experiment that I'd like to have with you. So if you're still tuning in, uh, grab up the next video when I go live and we're going to have a, a, a religious experiment. All right? It'll be great. And we'll poke holes and um, write through religion. And we won't serve it no more. We're going to serve Christ and uh, watch how we do that. So, all right. So I'll catch you on the next video. As I say, stay kind, stay out of your mind.